I, uh, I, can't, I can't say that on tape. That's, that's proprietary information. What's that you say? Yeah. <laughs> but then this one's got a little face on. Philip Greenlow, executive producer, 12 years. Yeah, MPC started as a production company in the 1970s. Started up working on films in the late 90s before really undergoing a lot of growth in the, in the 2000s. And then we really mushroomed in the last kind of five or six years into the kind of global network of facilities we are now. MPC is currently working on around 15 films across our global network. Nutcracker, the second Godzilla film, Lion King, Dumbo, a couple of different versions in the X-Men franchise and uh, Aquaman. We've had a pretty good last 12 months. We started with it last year, winning a BAFTA and the Oscar for Jungle Book for Disney. We followed that by delivering something like 10 or 12,000 shots, including Blade Runner 2049, Ridley's Alien Covenant, the fifth Pirates of the Caribbean film, Wonder Woman. Last year was just another classic year of growth for us, taking us forward into the next generation of visual effects, developing new tools, developing new workflows, expanding our footprint. Simon Jones, Head of Creative Operations since 2009. I would say the closeness of our relationship with Pixar is hugely important. You know, we do a huge amount of rendering. Rendering is a, a very large portion of what we do as a team. And it's really important that our relationship with the, the people that are providing our render for us is really strong and healthy. We use RenderMan to render all our hair that we run through the studio. We've used that for the Jungle Book, we've used that for all our characters um, that we build, whether they be uh, creatures or whether they be digi doubles. The biggest challenges for characters overall in the Pirates film were really creating extensions of live action characters that were also fully CG. So for Salazar specifically, that was, that was particularly true because it was a lot of facial replacement. He has a large wound in the side of his head. Rinderman was integral to making sure that uh, we were really matching the, the physical qualities of the, the cloth and the fabrics and the skin, as well as kind of marrying that together with the motion of the characters that we were creating. My favorite feature for Rinderman is this checkpointing and the idea of the iterative rendering. Um, I think that is going to be a, a massive game changer for a lot of studios. We already have all these ideas about how we can kind of try to push the bar even further. And we're always thinking about how can we make it look completely photoreal so that no one, no one can see the difference. But I think we're going to reach a point in the not too distant future where you, you won't be able to tell. In the last few years, the relationship we have with Pixar in how we utilize and develop it as our tool has solidified. It was a major part of our tool development on Jungle Book, which enabled us to produce all those photoreal creatures and environments. Um, and without it, we would have struggled to hit those levels that we hit. It, it does a good job. It has evolved over the years. You know, the, the newer versions of RenderMan in terms of the risk integration and the more path trace based operations and things like that, it was something that needed to happen and it's made a big, massive difference for us as a studio. And I think the collaboration between the Pixar team and the NPC team has really allowed us to, to conquer a lot of the challenges that we've been facing over the years. We continue to kind of be involved heavily with Pixar on, on its implementation here at MPC, um, sharing our experience of it to help it develop as a brilliant rendering tool. MPC's future is to continue producing amazing work, you know, not just in film but in art, in commercials and all of our endeavours. We want to utilise every thread of technological development that's out there to find the best tool sets that can help filmmakers and directors and studios realise their visions on the screen. If you had to design a random man teapot, what would it be? What? I have a couple. No, maybe I should get one. I, I have I have the green one. Maybe I should take this one. I like the clear one though. You know, I, I'd probably just slather it in the dark side of the moon cover. Uh, it would be rusted 
copper-worn. I'm going to talk to Rob. I don't know, he's the man to, to find these things. <laughs>